In this video, we're gonna take a look at the secondary ignition probes. Now, there are a few of these available to buy. So what we're gonna do is compare the ones that we've got here to see which one's the best and where you should spend your hard earned cash. Okay, so what we're gonna be comparing is the secondary ignition clamp from PicoScope. This is the BNC Plus cable that comes with the latest 4425A PicoScope. So we're gonna give that a go first. We're then gonna compare it to the Hantec HT25. Okay, so this is a secondary ignition probe that looks very, very similar to what you would get with the PicoScope. However, this one is, um, rather cheap you know you can pick this up for around i don't know 20 dollars probably less than that and it's just got the normal bnc connector on there the next one we've got is the secondary ignition clamp from rotkey so i've been looking at a few of these rotkey products lately and they are making some really good quality amazing value oscilloscope tools so we'll give that one a go as well and last but not least we've got the mechanic mindset special so this is probably about 10 cents worth of insulated copper cable so we'll see what we can do with that and if it's any good so we're going to be doing the test on this bmw mini and this has got the pencil type coils so there aren't actually any secondary ignition leads so what we're going to do is attach some of these extensions again PicoScope sell these with their kits and you can actually pick them up online quite cheap as well. So I'll leave links to everything we use today in the description below. And all you do is basically pull the uh, ignition coil off the plug and then insert the extension lead and attach the ignition coil to the other end. As you can see, it looks like the top of a spark plug. Here we've got all four coils out of the cylinder head with the extension leads on, one coil for each lead. And what we're going to do is clamp onto these extension leads to take our measurements. We'll be using none other than the PicoScope Automotive 4425A to take and compare the measurements on the four channels. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm going to save these waveforms once we're done and you can access them at mechanicmindset.com. So just sign up for the free trial and you will get access to our full free YouTube waveform library. You'll also be able to sample and see what's going on with our oscilloscope training package. Pretty cool if you could check that out as well. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm going to put this onto cylinder one and we will take a look. This is the PicoScope clamp. Okay, so we have got a waveform there. Let's uh, change the settings a bit so it's a little bit bigger. So let's just reduce that voltage reading and maybe just reduce the time by one to spread it out. The trigger's having a bit of a hard time picking it up sometimes. It's, it's not there all the time. I think that's just because of how quick that spike is there. However, we can see that we've got a waveform. So what we will do is create a reference waveform so we can compare it to the other tools. And just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, this is basically the trigger from the engine control unit. So that's the engine control unit basically charging up the primary side of the coil. And then it basically turns that coil off and that electromagnetic charge is then transferred into the secondary coil where we get the high voltage spike that we can see here that's required to generate the spark at the spark plug gap. So how you can use this for diagnosis is basically checking that you've got that trigger from the uh, ECU. And then on this second side, you can also see what's happening uh, with the spark and inside the cylinder. So what you would do is basically rev the engine while monitoring this, and you would be able to use that as a comparison between cylinders to see if you've got a possible problem with uh, the spark or the mixture. You can also see whether the peak voltage that's been reached is equal across the cylinders as well. And low voltages and short spark times can also indicate different kinds of problems. Okay, so we've got a reference there and I've made that bright green. Let's just move that down out of the way and we'll try the next tool. Okay, so the next one we're gonna try here is the Hantec HT25 should always be careful when um, working around ignition leads when the engine's running. You don't really want to get a zap. I know that these are all okay. And okay, wow, well, we could see we had a waveform there. Again, the trigger's having a bit of a hard time to capture it. 
However, if we just stop it there, we'll bring that other one up. Okay, it's quite similar. Looks a little bit different around here. That might be just because of where we've kind of caught the waveform. If we just run the scope again, yeah, it's definitely picking up slightly differently, but on the whole, they are very, very similar waveforms. Okay, so let's take a reference of that one and compare it to the rock key, which is next. Okay, so the rock key has this little rubberized clamp that you just need to kind of push over the ignition lead. So again, be careful if you're fitting this with the engine running. Okay, what I have done with the rock key sensor is I've used the same ignition probe as the other two. So you can see up here, we've got ignition probe selected. So what I'm gonna do is change that to the normal scaling probe. So just a times one, and we'll have a look at it with the voltage settings rather than the ignition probe settings. So we can see now that this is, it's gone upside down. So we've got the invert setting on Pico 6. So we've adjusted the invert there. So we've basically flipped the pattern upside down. So now what we should be able to do is get those voltage settings much lower. And now actually we've got something that is pretty much very, very similar to the Hantec and the Pico scope waveforms. So there's the Pico scope and there's the Hantec. So by using the normal voltage settings, that rock key sensor is actually giving us a pretty good waveform there. So I'm just going to save that. Okay, now for the Mechanic Mindset Special. So what we're going to do is get this piece of wire and wrap it around that coil and use this clip to just go on that exposed bit of copper cable there. Okay, so we want to go on number four here. So I'm just going to wrap that around there. There's no science behind this. I've just grabbed this bit of cable out of my box. So maybe different lengths might affect this. And then put that on there. And then I'm just going to connect the positive lead of our normal cable to that crocodile clip. So it'd be interesting to see how well this performs to the other three options. Okay, wow, so just setting it up on one volt, you can see that we've got quite a bit of activity there. So we're gonna to have to change a few settings on here. Let's just increase that voltage so that we make it a bit smaller this way. I think that's what we're looking for there, look. So we can also see it's upside down. So let's hit the invert function for channel D, invert on. So it looks like what we're picking up there. You see how it flashes to this image. Uh, let's just go back. That looks like um, it's picked up the interference from the coils, a little bit similar to when we put the coin on top of the coil. However, if we look at what we've got here, this looks a little bit more like what we have on the other waveforms. So maybe this one is a little bit more difficult to capture. Okay, interesting. So it looks like the big waveform is actually from our coil. If I just grab this clip and move it down towards the coils, that's actually giving us a, a pretty good waveform. It looks like that, that big waveform there is what we are looking at from that coil. Okay, so I'll just move the trigger up a bit now so it ignores that other bit of interference. Let's increase that voltage. Okay, there we go. So one thing to be careful of, look, we are at 100 volts there. So if you were going to be using your 2204A, you might want to put an attenuator on the front of it to capture it. Okay, I've stopped that now so that we can compare uh, the mechanic mindset wire coil to all the others. And if we just bring up the PicoScope one first, you can see actually it's, it's a little bit similar. However, where the PicoScope one goes flat here, the wire coil just creeps back up again. However, we are still getting that kind of uh, high tension spike, the high voltage from that wire coil. Um, compare it again to the Hantec. Again, we've got something similar again. Again, the Hantec was much more similar to what we had with the Pico scope here in green. And then down here, we've got the rock key. So there we are, we've got all four on the screen there. The wire coil, the Hantec, the Pico scope, and the rock key. 
Love to know what you think about those four different waveforms uh, there and whether you would go out and get one, which one would it be? Just let us know in the comments below.